Hello, hello. Welcome to the Skeins of Dreams Knitting Podcast. I'm Megha. I'm also known as Skeins of Dreams on Instagram and on Ravelry. Um, thank you so much for checking out my video. If you're a new or if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for being here. I think a lot of you have been waiting for this video. I got a lot of comments about um, people looking forward to my Rhinebeck weekend recap. So here it is. Uh, if you're a new viewer and this is the first video you're checking out, um, I am. I went to the New York Sheep and Wool Festival um, last weekend. I've been talking about it in my previous episodes. Um, just, you know, planning my trip and my outfits and things like that. So I've done that. I've been there, done that, and I'm back home now. So um, it's a week later. Uh, today is Sunday, October 29th. And um, I am here to talk all about my weekend and also give you an update on my knitting shenanigans because it has been a month maybe since I uploaded my last episode. So thank you so much for being here and um, we'll get right into it, right into all the knitting stuff. But before that, you if you've been watching my videos, you can see there's been a little bit of a, a rejig behind me. <laughs> so um, I've been recording in front of this cubby of mine which has all a lot of my yarn it's not all of my yarn um i have to be honest <laughs> it, it, it is a lot of my yarn um but i had arranged this cubby like by weight uh like they do in the stores i had fingering and dk and worsted and all of that um but I suddenly a friend of mine just suggested oh why don't you do it by color it'll just look pretty you know what you have all already so I was like you know what why why do I need to do it by weight so I went ahead and did it by color and I'm so pleased with how it turned out you can see it's all the colors I always knit with of course I mean what else would be there so you have the pinks and the purples and the greens and blues here I have a lot of beige I did not realize I have so much beige but I do <laughs> and then there's like all the rusts browns and oranges and yellows here and of course this one is a bit mixed bag like it has some magentas and reds and you know um I mean there's only so much space so uh yeah it it I like how this looks I'm so excited about the background <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I was doing this yesterday and I, in anticipation of uh, having time to record this morning, so uh, I'm here now and uh, yeah, and uh, quickly what I'm wearing is my uh, Reflections Vest by Heidi Kiermaier. Um, this is uh, like a vest pattern and I think the suggested yarn was Sonder DK, but I've used fiber company Acadia and it has beautiful cables that go down the front I'm gonna try and stand up but I'm wearing like a hot pink joggers underneath this so if you see a flash of the pink I mean I, I live my green and pink life um, all the time so let me try and stand up <laughs> oh yeah so um, it has the cables down the front um, it's a very comfortable vest and I decided I'd wear this because I'm trying to teach myself how to wear vests and I am really liking these layering t-shirts I purchased from Target and I feel like I need one in every color and I need a vest to go with every layering t-shirt you know <laughs> um, you will see this theme return when I show you what I um, bought at Rhinebeck so you'll see the vest theme come back a little so I thought it would be appropriate to dress up in a vest as well so all right uh, I've just started five minutes in and then I'm already rambling ahead <laughs> all right so um I guess we we'll, I'm trying to think if I want to show you my knitting first or if I want to talk about Rhinebeck first. Um, all right, let's get right into it. 
uh, with my finished object. I'll talk about my finished object, works in progress, and then I'll talk about the Rhinebeck weekend. So, uh, my only finished object is my Alder sweater. Um, holding it the other side. Uh, this beautiful sweater was designed by Rebecca, who's the Crea Bea on YouTube. And Rebecca and Amy and I went to Rhinebeck together. So I'm going to talk about that a little later. But I was dedicatedly working on this sweater before Rhinebeck because I wanted to wear it one of the days and I wore it on Sunday and it worked out perfectly. The sweater fits me really well and I'm so, so happy with it. Uh, I knit this in Sonder Yarns Sunday Morning DK and the colors are Afterglow and Stormy Weather. So it's like a nice red with like a bluish gray. Um, which was a, I felt like it was a unique combination and I am so happy how it turned out. It looks really nice and it, and I'm so, so pleased with how the, you know, sweater fits and the design is amazing. As you all already know, if you watch my videos, I'm a big fan of everything Rebecca designs. I think they're like very much my style. So I try and knit everything I can. I did put like a little tag on my sweater. Uh, I buy these tags from Etsy and I like it says MJ on this side and it says Skeins of Dreams on the other side. So this is one of those screw on tags and I use them um, uh, on the front left of my sweater so that I know which side is the front, especially if I can't, you know, sometimes the short rows are not easy to tell. And I use them on all my sweaters. I use them on the ones that I give to people. I use them on Baljeet's sweater. So i love these tags so yeah so this was my one finished object uh it's been worn and i actually wore it on the drive back so i've like driven my car in it so like it's got rubbed against the back of the seat or whatever like uh, the car seat and then it has a little bit of pilling under the arms but nothing too much i feel like first wear actually gets a lot of stuff out and then if you clean it um it should be okay. I am planning to re-wash it and I want to wash it in hot water. Uh, the sweater worked out perfectly on Sunday because Sunday was a little chilly. Uh, but if it's not chilly, I feel like this is a, definitely a prickly sweater for me. I'm I'm realizing just now that I, I, I am quite sensitive to the type of wools. And this is a BFL Masham blend. And uh, for some reason, I felt Rebecca's sweater and it is not, it does not feel like mine. Like hers was on the Ecru base. And I don't know if it's the colors because sometimes colors turn out to be scratchier than other colors. And I don't know why or how that happens. So Rebecca's sweater was definitely, definitely way softer than this is. And I don't know if it's the way you knit but she did mention that she washed it in like hot water and I don't think I washed this in hot water. I was very worried about the red bleeding into the gray, but that didn't happen. So I'm going to rewash it in hot water and report back on how that changed the feel of the sweater. It was wonderful. I wore it all day Sunday, but it has to be a cold day for me to wear it. So I want to like try and wash it in hot water to see if I can make it a bit softer to wear on other days. And I work like indoors most of the time. I have like a inside job. I'm not outdoors as much. So I would like to wear a lot of my sweaters indoors as well. So that's that. Um, so yeah, so this is the alder and I'm super pleased with how it turned out. Um, works in progress. So I have a few and they all seem to be raglan sweaters um so this episode is rhinebeck and raglans for a reason <laughs> so this is the first work in progress this is a sweater i was working on for baljeet i i cast it on in like april sometime and i had put it away but it's just a basic raglan and i started working on it again you've seen i finished the body however when baljeet tried it on it's kind of um tight for him right now because he's going to the gym and um you know his clothes 
have changed the size of his clothes so i feel like this is getting abandoned for a bit and he keeps cycling back and forth so he will lose the weight at some point and so um i think like i think the sweater will fit him better at a later stage so because he's not going to be able to wear it i wanted him to have a relaxed raglan sweater and this is in no sense a relaxed sweater anymore so i kind of have put it aside i don't think i'm going to work on it this winter i'm going to let it go it's just got sleeves left on it so i can finish it whenever as needed pretty quickly within a week or something so but for now this sweater is getting hiber it's going into hibernation i just wanted to give you an update because i did work on the body and i finished it and i think i may have to lengthen the body as well so um yeah this sweater needs work so it's not getting done anytime soon but i just wanted to show it real quickly before i put it away um it's a very gloomy day in pittsburgh i feel like the um video might become too grainy so i'm gonna turn on the overhead yellow light which is not my favorite thing to do but hopefully that will resolve this issue it's like middle of the day it's like noon or something and it's this gloomy so i really can't help it okay i didn't want to turn on the yellow light because it was showing my yarn really horribly so i'm i moved the camera a little hopefully this is okay we'll quickly talk about the knitting when i talk about rhinebeck it's okay if i don't have good lighting so uh the next work in progress is this poncho that i had been working on uh i'm just knitting self drafted poncho just doing a raglan with twisted stitches so i did the collar and then i started the raglan i'm only like I have crossed the point where I would have divided for sleeves if it was a sweater but I'm going to just keep increasing till it has sufficient ease and then go straight down from there so I haven't had a lot of time to knit on this because I got distracted by the Rhinebeck weekend so I am going to go back to it but right now this is where it is I'm knitting this in this chainnet yarn it's um landlust merino and i think this is the bulky weight it's 120 is it yards or meters i think it's 120 yards in like 100 grams or something like that um so yeah uh it's working out very well it's a pretty dense fabric i would say um i'm i'm a little concerned about this neck though it stretches quite a bit i am hoping i block it out like it would be nice if the neck stays standing but i don't want it too close to my neck because it it annoys me if like um if it's not super soft and it's like super close to my neck so we'll see i think i'll block it and then it'll become a bit softer as well but yeah that's the situation of my poncho right now it's not like um close to being finished but i am i'm going to start working on it more once i finish my current and like the work in progress i cannot let go of i cast on this sweater before leaving for rhinebeck and this is just a plain raglan in a fingering weight yarn and i don't know what has happened to me but i am unable to let go of this um and i have just been knitting on it so this is basically 10 days of knitting like i have not worked on anything else like i was working on it during rhinebeck since i came back i was knitting on it honestly i didn't get a lot of time to knit during the um new york sheep and wool weekend but since i came back every chance i get this is the only project i feel like knitting i think this is an excellent color for me i am super super pleased with it this is honestly another one of my just basic raglan sweaters i tried to base it base it off of um the tolster t fingering weight version by rebecca but honestly i didn't meet gauge so it's not the same gauge so i did my own thing uh i i just looked at the tolster t pattern to figure out how many stitches to cast on 
and then um and i'm usually so for example like a lot of designers will tell you cast on the neck with like a smaller needle and then switch to a bigger needle for the body and i'm too lazy to do that sometimes so what i do is i cast on fewer stitches than required so for example if a pattern says cast on 120 in us2 or something for the ribbing i'll cast on 100 on us3 which is my main needle and i'll do the ribbing and then i'll just increase to the stitch count that i need to be for the body after the ribbing and i i, I do this just because i don't want to be bothered by changing needles i have to go hunt for the needle i don't know i'm lazy what can i tell you <laughs> So this was one of those like, if you're not test knitting, you can do whatever, you know, and you can rip it back. Who cares? So uh, this is one of those super lazy patterns for me. So I just like cast on whatever I felt like. And I think I have the notes on my Ravelry page. And because it didn't meet the gauge um, of the Toll City pattern, I, I, I gave up on using that pattern and I just did my raglan increases and then I, I measured my gauge and then figured out at what point I needed to split for the body and sleeves. And I have all my notes on Ravelry if you're interested. I think I'm making, I'm going for a finished 49 inch bust on this. Uh, I want to be able to wear it just like next to skin without a layering piece on underneath. So just over my bra. And I decided that I needed more fingering weight garments in my wardrobe because I, like I said, I work indoors. So I like to have warm sweaters, um, but still not too hot for being indoors. So I think four ply works out very well. Fingering weight sweaters are amazing for that. And the yarn I'm using is this beautiful, stunning, uh, blacker yarns BFL. So it's a hundred percent BFL by blacker yarns and i had purchased when they were having some sort of a sale so i got it shipped from the uk i have this and another green color i think this green and it's like darker green but yeah so i have uh another green and this um beautiful deep red uh the color is called red coronation coral i don't know why it says coral on it i have to look at coronation i don't know what like how the color relates whatever but this is the beautiful yarn and the color and i'm in love with blue face lester yarn like it's my favorite thing ever and it feels so nice to knit with and i have just not been able to put this down um i'm as you can see i'm like pretty much like you know quite a quite I've done quite a bit on the body um, and I'm thinking three quarter sleeves for this, but I'll see. I might just make it full sleeves, but I think three quarters is a nice feminine length and I can wear it as a shirt on like my trousers and wear it to work and it look super professional. So I think that's what I'm going for. But yeah, that is my current and like major work in progress like i have not worked on anything else but the other ones i wanted to show you because since i last recorded i have worked on those so i just wanted to give you an update about that but this is what where my heart lies currently <laughs> so yeah so that's all my work in progress situation is right now i don't know what's happened to me i am kind of obsessed with this one um project and that's what i'm going with i'm giving myself like leeway i'm like okay just knit on whatever you feel like don't think too much about it and i feel like just because the um the rhinebeck weekend was very like that the, there was a lot going on I, I i think my brain is not in the mood to think too much so that's that um i think that's everything knitting like knitting updates and let's move on to the new york sheep and wool weekend update <laughs> uh sounds like a news channel weekend updates okay so um i know a lot of you know this already but i'm gonna repeat it anyways i went to the new york cheap and wool festival with amy palco of the meaningful stitch and rebecca clo of the crea bea podcast does she call herself crea bea knits i think I think it's the Korea Bea podcast. I don't know. I, 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 I've been talking about her for two years and I still don't know the name of her channel. That's weird. Okay. 
So, <laughs> Amy, Rebecca and I decided to do the weekend together and we had a few other events uh, we wanted to attend before the um, New York Sheep and Wool Festival which was the Saturday and Sunday last week. I think the 21st and 22nd of October was the New York Sheep and Wool Festival and we, Amy and Rebecca, are they live in Scotland so they flew in to New York City on the Wednesday so that's the 18th October which was a Wednesday they flew into New York City and I drove from Pittsburgh to New York um, I left home around 8 a.m. and I got there by maybe 3 3 30 uh, it took me a while to um, get from New Jersey to Brooklyn where we were staying we had booked a hotel in Brooklyn downtown Brooklyn it was a holiday inn and one of my first check boxes was I drove in Manhattan. Uh, that was that was something I was not looking forward to. It wasn't the worst, but I can now say that I have driven a car in Manhattan. Like that's that's a, another check box I have like a skill set. It's almost like a skill set. Um, so <laughs> so yeah, that was interesting, but it was it was all good. We reached um, I reached Brooklyn by three thirty, and checked into the hotel. And Amy and Rebecca had already reached New York, but they went in to get some coffee. So they met me at the hotel around four p.m. and lots of hug hugs and uh, laughter and smiles because we were we have been talking with each other for almost two years now, and this is the first time we met in person. So it was really nice to see them both in person. Uh, they're as as lovely in person as they are on on their YouTube channel. So I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed. Um, or was looking forward to the rest of the weekend with them because I think we clicked pretty much instantly. I mean, I mean we already clicked, we knew that uh, when we spoke online, but it was really nice to see them. So we checked into our hotel rooms and we just sat and, you know, talked for a bit, just caught up on everything on their flight journey. Like, you know, just they were talking about their flight there and I was just talking with my drive and um, and how excited we were for the rest of the weekend. So after a bit of uh, blather, as Amy says, <laughs> uh, we um, decided to go like take a walk, go see a little bit of Brooklyn um, downtown. And then also um, we walked to the Manhattan Bridge. So we just wanted to go see like something. So we walked to the Manhattan Bridge got a few lovely pictures taken of each other and then we stopped at a cute little wine bar for a drink and then um, afterwards we went for dinner and then back to the hotel room so that was the easy Wednesday we had and we were talking the whole time obviously um, and I think one of the first things from the weekend was all the we it, it was already like time to receive yarn and project bags and everything <laughs> so amy uh amy's um and um lorna i think auntie lorna um she has the cocoon tree shop a project she makes project bags and so we got these beautiful little notion pouches project bags from amy so amy had uh she had brought a lot of them and she just laid them out and she was like okay take your pick so i ended up picking this one um and i am so so pleased this is so beautiful uh very well made it has like a cooking cocoon tree tag to it and um it's orange on the inside so really pretty i'm super pleased with it and then amy of Amy very very generously brought me a whole sweaters quantity like a massive sweaters quantity she got me this yarn from by Laxton's which is a mill in the UK and I think it's the same mill that supplies yarn to Sonder yarn and like the Sonder yarn people have their own color colors but by Laxton's has a different color range so this is the yarn she got me she got me eight skeins of this my god that is a lot of yarn but Amy very generously gifted me this sweaters quantity and this is also I think the same base as the Sonder DK I think it's BFL Masham it feels like the same base um, beautiful beautiful peach color I am so so happy with this and Rebecca gave me 
and I can't believe I don't have this and I had stored it away but Rebecca very kindly gifted me this Skin Ross 4 ply um, V County yarns it's 100% wool spun in Scotland and Rebecca's used this yarn a lot she talks a lot about the yarn and so she gave me two skeins of this wonderful purple color and uh, I think the shade is called Wildflower and I think it will be so so beautiful in like a, as a contrast color for a different you know for a project or something or I, I have to figure out how I incorporate this but thank you so much Rebecca this is I mean of course it's my color like both of these are my colors so I got yarn even before the weekend began <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna blend in my acquisitions as I talk about it because it tells you know just the sequence of events I'm, I hope that's okay but most of my acquisitions are at the end of the festival so you know it's gonna be a little bit until the final day um, but yeah so that was I guess Wednesday um, everything on Wednesday and then on Thursday morning we went to have a nice big breakfast uh, because of the jet lag I think Amy and Rebecca just were more hungry in the morning um, which worked out perfectly well for me because I like brunch food breakfast and brunch food so we got a big American breakfast I think I um, it, you know you the usual places that have like eggs and pancakes and potatoes and um, breakfast wraps so we found a nice spot in Brooklyn and we walked over to have breakfast we had a big breakfast and then we drove um, it took us an hour and 15 minutes to get to Mount Kisco New York maybe it took us one and a half hours I can't remember again I drove in Manhattan through New York um, we drove over the Brooklyn, Brooklyn Bridge, which, which was nice. Um, so we drove to Mount Kisco, where we went to the Pick Up Every Stitch yarn store. Um, the owners of Pick Up Every Stitch, Karen and Felicia, had like a little event happening. They had invited a lot of podcasters there and a lot of their regular customers came to meet the podcasters and then also to buy yarn and uh, Rochelle from uh, Moonrake Yarn Company had like a small pop-up there. Um, I've, I've spoken to Rochelle quite a bit, um, you know, over Instagram. It was really nice to meet her in person and there were so many people there, like people I've watched. Um, so it was so nice to meet everybody. Um, the Kevin and Ray from Needles at the Ready podcast, Kim, Kate and Laura from um, the Knitting Posse. I met Casey uh, from Young Folk Knits for the first time. It was so, so amazing because Casey and I talk every single day. Like we are constantly talking, chatting over Instagram about knitting. And it was so nice to see her in person. She was there with Becky, of course. Uh, Becky has the A uh, Hand Knit Letter podcast on YouTube and Casey and Becky do the audio podcast Young Folk Knits uh, together which I listen to every Wednesday um, while I drive to work and Casey and Becky were there with their husband so they didn't stay too long because you know they had left home super early that morning and wanted to go get something to eat um but i got to hug her so that was amazing <laughs> uh and then um <clears throat> the the ladies from the wool and wine podcast were there and then beth mcdonald stone who is a wonderful designer and she recently started her own podcast and i've been talking to her on instagram and it was so nice to meet beth in person she is so so lovely i really really like her and um she was wearing a different design of hers every day and I'm going to talk a little about this later but I have made a list of designers basically that I want to knit from. I feel like we all fall in the same rut of, it's not a rut, it's it's wonderful but we all find designers that we like and we just make like things by them but I want to kind of give myself an opportunity to try other designers and so I'm making a list of designers uh, who I want to um, I mean, I want to make one of their designs and Beth is on top of my list. Like, I, I love everything she makes and she was wearing one of these textured um, sweaters of hers and I'm completely blanking on the name right now, but 
um she had made it in that hedgehog fibers 3d it looked like that yarn might not have been but i am super excited to uh, actually knit designs by other designers who have not really knit from before um that was not a grammatically accurate sentence but you get the gist uh so yeah <laughs> Uh, I'm definitely missing out. Oh, yes, of course, Kim and Jana from Knit, to, Knit. Is it Knit Together with Kim and Jana? They were there. And um, I'm for sure forgetting some people. Uh, but it was wonderful. The, the store was, um, it's a substantially big store, um, but we all were quite you know there it, it was comfortable i wouldn't say it was overcrowded it was comfortable we saw a lot of people a lot of uh viewers came up and said hi and that was wonderful and uh it was just nice to hang out with all the knitters and everyone was excited for Rhinebeck. i was wearing my violet tea by jessica mcdonald's um i had quickly changed in the car like after we parked because it was a hot day actually hotter than uh, we were anticipating it would be so i quickly changed into like a t-shirt a hand knit t-shirt but um it was wonderful like perfect um knitwear for that day uh we reached pick up every stitch around noon and we were there until four almost but in the middle i think we took a break and went to a starbucks and got some coffee and um and then went back to the store so it was really nice to meet everybody and have a quick chat um the store was beautiful but i did not end up buying anything like i was i was it was the, the the event at pick up every stitch was very nice and talking to people was very nice but i was not in the mood to actually look at the yarn and actually buy something i did i did walk around to see some of the yarn and it was all very beautiful but i couldn't justify purchasing anything so i didn't leave with um anything but um very very glad to have been there and very gracious of uh, felicia and karen um for having us there so that was really nice and i think i got some swag from the uh, needles at the ready um boys and even the knitting posse were giving away a little bit of swag so i have that but i didn't bring it with me so um but you i'm sure you've seen it they had like i think it was a measuring tape or something i got a couple of those so that's always useful because i keep losing all my measuring tapes I have like so many but i can never find one when i need one it goes it, it goes with you know it's the same deal with stitch markers and it's like the same deal with measuring tapes for me so yeah so that was the wednesday thing and we were trying to go to the cemetery at sleepy hollow that same evening before going for dinner but the cemetery closed at 4 30 and we couldn't make it there in time so we actually hung out at jana's house for a bit so we had dinner with kim and jana and uh, that was really wonderful so before heading out to dinner because because we had reservations we just hung out at jana's house for a bit and um met her dog and her husband <laughs> um so that was really nice it was a good break after um the hustle and bustle of pick up every stitch um and then we headed to dinner with Kim and Jana. So it was the three of us, Amy, Rebecca and I and Kim and Jana. And we went to a Greek restaurant, MP Taverna. Um, and that was really nice. The food was wonderful. We had a really, really good dinner and wonderful conversation. It was so nice to see them in person. I've watched their videos, but not I've not watched like all of them uh, but i i feel like now i since i know them better i need to go back and watch all of all of their videos <laughs> um but it was so wonderful to see them and it was a very nice quiet dinner and we, we it was lovely like i have i i was very happy by the end of it um and then we went to our airbnb so i had booked an airbnb in piermont new york uh which was on the other side of the is it a lake i think there's a lake there and it was on it was on the other side of the lake and the airbnb was very nice but we were so exhausted so we just all um did our thing before bed and then just went to sleep next day morning we were driving up to Catskills, New York to go to the Woolen Folk Festival. So that was the Friday. 
uh, before heading out to Woolen Folk, we found a small cafe, Bunbury's, I think that was, that. that's what it's, it was called. And they were, they, they had like famous, their buns were famous. It's called Bunbury's. So we went there for a, co for a coffee and some pastry. Uh, Amy found a gluten-free pastry for herself. And then Rebecca and I shared like a pumpkin cream muffin and a bun or something like that like we were going all out with all our breakfast food like it was amazing so um we had a good uh breakfast and then we headed out to Catskills the drive was incredible like it was peak fall color season and it was just amazing uh the drive is about maybe almost two hours maybe one and a half I think it was one and a half and it was raining and a little bit and the fall colors were out and of course we were listening to Noah Cahan on the <laughs> on the uh during during the ride in the during the drive in the car we were listening to Noah Cahan and his stick season album because that's all the fall vibes Rebecca has been um into and I had uh, since Rebecca had talked about Noah Cahan a, a few times I had listened to some of his songs but not like a lot so it was nice to actually listen to those songs during the drive that was very like appropriate for the entire vibe of the trip right so it was very nice um and we reached woolen folk around or we reached the venue around 11 found parking we had to be there early because amy was invited to be on one of the podcaster patio events so she was a special guest for the event so amy and rebecca uh, I mean, Amy had to be there early and then we went and stood in the queue to get into the venue around 11.30. It was going to start at noon, but Ava, who is from the Scottish Yarn Festival booths and she has a new line of yarns now um, and Amy talked about the yarns on her episode a couple episodes ago or maybe... Yeah, not the po poetry advents, but the one she did last in Edinburgh. She talked about the Scottish Yarn Festival yarns. Um, and uh, Ava, who is from the Scottish Yarn Festival like booth and everything, she uh, had a few yarns for people to squish but not really purchase. So she was just like, I don't know what, exhibiting the yarn so people could see what the yarn feels and looks like. And Eva actually came and took us inside um, to the Woolen Folk venue because Amy and Rebecca had special guest passes and I was just being an intruder and just getting in because I was with them. <laughs> Why not? So we were able to get in early into the event. Uh, so we missed a lot of the, you know, wait and everything, queuing up to the event, which was, I mean, okay. All of you probably already have heard and read about all the crazy that went down at Woolen Folk. So in a way, because of all the situation around us, we were privileged in, a, in certain ways because we had to get there early. We didn't realize we were privileged in certain ways. We had to get there early. So I didn't have any parking trouble. Like I, I found parking pretty easily because we were there early. We didn't have to wait in the queue. So we got in early. But already we had got a sense from the vendors that things were not right and they were struggling with a lot of things at the festival. It was not well organized. They didn't know what the floor plan was. We didn't know where any of the vendors were supposed to be. So that was a thing. So yeah, the festival had already started out with us being a bit unsure of what to expect. And then as you've heard with everyone, um, as you've heard from everyone, um, the vendors especially, like they had a really hard time at the festival, though we wouldn't know, right? Like the vendors were so gracious, so wonderful. Everyone you spoke to was had a smile on their faces. So we didn't know all the crap they had to go through the previous day, which we found out later, which was pretty spectacularly <laughs> like, how did this happen? I have no idea. For us, the festival was very, it was very crowded. It was very exhausting. But the best part about the whole weekend and the, and Woolen Folk was all the people we met. 
it was so so wonderful to meet everyone all the viewers who came up and said hi thank you so much if you're watching and if you spoke to me thank you so much for coming and saying hi i had not expected so many people to come up and uh, talk to me honestly like it was it was kind of humbling in a way i i didn't realize um you know it's different i'm talking to my camera and i go to a festival and then i meet the people who are actually watching so it was it was very very nice to see and meet everybody meanwhile the festival itself like you know i don't know what to say you've already heard all the things it was insane 3000 people crammed into a venue for 500 not safe at all obviously and then there's no way we were able to be in in the indoors and the buildings that were inside without feeling claustrophobic because it, so many people crammed into like tiny spaces and um it was hard to kind of maneuver uh, the floor plan without knowing where your vendors were i was wearing my tolster tea that i had made in the hot pink um, electric orchid yarn from the wandering flock so at one point during the event i kind of wanted to go to the wandering flock blue booth to meet geraldine um and actually show her what i was wearing but oh my god, like just getting into that building and getting to the wandering flock booth, it was just incredibly hard. Like, um, I made it there. I met Geraldine, um, and there was a queue to get into her booth, which we didn't end up doing. We did not, honestly, I didn't feel I had the patience to stand inside with so many people and actually look at yarn. And you know, yarn shopping is not like you just like put stuff in your bag and you leave it's it's not like that you look at the colors you compare it with other colors and the lighting was horrible like i know it's the last thing you think of because so much so much was wrong with the festival but you cannot buy yarn in a dark space like you don't know what the color looks like you don't know what it goes with so it was like the whole experience was not well th thought out um honestly so i'm just taking away from the event that meeting people was the highlight and was the only thing i was there for and i enjoyed meeting people i enjoyed talking to everyone everyone's sweaters were amazing um and it was so nice to put like actual like it can it can be faces to names because i know the faces but just like meeting people in person is so much different from just seeing them on your tv or something right so or meeting viewers who you are basically named so i was asking people what their handles were on youtube or instagram because i recognize them by their handles but i've not really seen them enough to know who they are by just looking at them so that was really fun and at that event of course i was reunited with casey and <laughs> it was so wonderful to see her and casey um made this wonderful little project bag for me that i absolutely love it is so so pretty it has like this small handle for your wrist pretty much and um it's a nice leather strap so i really like that and it, a cute zipper tab with a zipper on top and um yeah it's a very very pretty project bag so now i have something of Casey's is also smelling nice and that's not me I think that's smells nice <laughs> so very very pretty project bag that I got from Casey so uh, it was so nice to see her honestly the whole weekend I wish and I feel like I'm saying honestly a lot in this video I need to stop um I felt like I did not get enough time to hang out with Casey like that was one of the things I was looking forward to. Like I wanted to have some time to knit and relax and, you know, just talk. But that didn't happen because it was just so intense. Like I was doing, there were things I was doing and then Casey was there, of course, with Becky and her husband and like their husbands. And so I understood that obviously, but I, um, I think we need to plan something, Casey. I know you're watching. <laughs> we need to plan something to hang out and just knit and um you know yeah hang out basically so thank you so much for my wonderful project bag i am so so pleased with this um i love the fabric so beautiful so yeah so 
I know I'm being super haphazard about it, but that's how the event was. And I'm trying to remember bits and pieces. Um, the p- podcaster patio event that Amy was part of, we were able to watch at least the first 20 minutes of it. Amy was on stage with um, Adela and Jimmy from Lola Bean Yan. Um, Amy was there and then Jackie from Carrie Jack's Knits was there. And the four of them were very, very um, wonderful to watch. Like all the questions being asked, they, they answered very honestly. It was very nice. And the experience would have been so much better had the seating arrangement been a bit more thought out. There were like maybe 30, 40 chairs in the space and the rest of it was basically puddle because it was raining and it was outdoors under a tent and the ground was completely wet. I was wearing my bloodstones and which was okay because every time you're stepping in, your foot is going like an inch into the ground because it was so muddy and puddly and everything. So I don't know what you can do about it. I think the venue is just not the right venue for the scale of the event and for the things that you needed to do. I know some people also like, you know, we, you could drop the yarn into the mud. And I had seen in front of me at the Explorer Knits booth, people had dropped yarn and Ali was picking it up and like wiping it on her uh, leggings or on her on like other um, staff at the Explorer Knit Nits booth had a couple of times had to clean yarn because it fell into the mud. So it was just not a good venue for a yarn festival. I know. I know we can talk everything ne- negative. There's a lot of chatter going on on Instagram and Reddit and everywhere you can think of, even YouTube now. But it was what it was. I don't think I will go back to Woolen Folk again, um, even if they. I'm I'm trying to decide for myself, is it worth going to all these other events before Rhinebeck? It was wonderful from the aspect of being with Amy and Rebecca. I got to hang out with them the most. And that was my favorite thing about the trip is the deeper connection that you that we made because we were ha- we were doing everything together. And then uh, anyway, so that was that. That was the event. I did walk away with one um purchase and i uh found this one of the vendors there was a smaller vendor called wear wool and they're a um vendor from vermont and they had so many beautiful sh- breed specific yarns there this one i picked up is a 50 percent jacob 50 percent shetland and it's a dk weight um and it's in this beautiful undyed brown and i got enough to make a vest so that's what I meant by me wearing the theme of the day is that I have picked up a few yarns because I want to make more vests in my wardrobe because they make for excellent indoor outfits. And I picked up like enough to make a vest for myself. I'm still looking for a pattern, but I'm super pleased with this yarn. Um, it's very soft. Like I can't believe how soft this is. Um, it's almost like hand spun in a way. So um okay so it says here it's 100 percent local vermont wool um where wool is woman owned and regeneratively farmed where wool connects vermont fiber farmers with people and provides fiber artists with these wonderful rare and hard to find vermont yarns that is so beautiful i'm so happy with my purchase so i did walk away with one sweaters quantity vest quantity let's say I think it's about a thousand yards for me. So, yeah. So that's what I purchased at the festival. And then um, I think we left there maybe, I can't remember, maybe around 5 till 5 p.m. or something. I can't remember. We had some food at the end. We just got like tater tots from a food truck. And the three of us were extremely exhausted. Rebecca and I were able to take a couple breaks and actually run to the car because I had parked on the street and the meter expired every two hours. So I had to go and refresh the meter, the parking meter. And so that kind of gave us an opportunity to leave the venue for a bit, take a bit of a break, go find some coffee. So we were able to take breaks, but Amy was there the whole time. And I I was feeling really bad for her because she had like all these commitments that she was um, doing. And so she didn't get a break from leaving the venue so she was there for a good five 
five and a half hours um, and it was intense. <laughs> so after uh, Woolen Folk, we then went to have dinner. Initially, we were planning to just like get dinner and go to our Airbnb directly. But um, when we got to the restaurant, we were like, okay, maybe let's go in and, you know, chill for a bit. And I feel like that changed our energy levels completely we were so exhausted after wool and folk but going to a restaurant sitting down getting some food and uh drink each or something it just like and talking over or talking through the event we just felt a little like our energy recuper recuperated or whatever so it was it was nice that we we got to sit down and kind of uh process what the day was <laughs> um so yeah, and uh, oh, I forgot to mention that I met Michael from Peace for Peace at Woolen Folk. I met um, Max and Vincent from Les Garçons. And of course, I'd met the Needles at the Ready Knitting Posse um, at the previous uh, day also. So I just met everybody again. I saw Cece, who is Stitch Witch Craft on Instagram. I saw Taji, who is Tangles and Starlights on Instagram. So I saw so many people. I'm surely forgetting a lot of them. Of course, I met Caitlin and Jackie from Caddy Jacks. I met Caitlin, who is the Wanderlust Knitter on Instagram, and she was there at the Lamb and Kid booth. So I met a lot of people that day and I'm definitely forgetting and I saw people I had seen already uh, at Pick Up Every Stitch as well. Like I saw Beth McDonald soon again and um, yeah, so it was a good, good event filled with a lot of people. <laughs> uh, it's basically blurry currently. Um, and I don't know if you can hear Oreo, but he's screaming on top of his voice. The door is open. He can be here, but he's choosing not to be. And he is beckoning me to come and sit on the couch in the living room. He's a spoiled brat. So that was Friday. And then was the actual Rhinebeck Saturday, Sunday, right? So um, Saturday morning, same deal. We went and had a good breakfast, then went to Rhinebeck. We only got there around... 11 30 or so um because we didn't want to go super early we were very exhausted exhausted from wool and folk so we um waited until later to get into the event Rhinebeck was wonderful um the saturday is usually busier so we did go around looking at some yarn and some of the booths but then we were also at the hill for a while uh, um at Rhinebeck also i met so many people as, as, and i thoroughly enjoyed what meeting people that I watch podcasts of like um, I, I met the knitting ladies Petra and Natasha uh, who were there at the festival I met Anastasia from Free Your Sheep and Lily Kate Meeks uh, Anastasia and Lily Kate Meeks were there together um, oh and I also met Mia from Knit and Grace it was so nice to see Mia and Cece and Taji again at Rhinebeck. Uh, it was so, so wonderful to see them in person. We've been chatting a lot online. And of course, I met Casey and Becky again on Saturday. I don't think I saw them on Sunday. I don't think they came back on the Sunday. But I definitely saw Casey and Becky on the Saturday. Um, so yeah, so many people. And I, I'm definitely forgetting. <laughs> And all the people had already met at Woolen Folk. I met them again. Everyone was in brand new sweaters. So it was really nice seeing that. Um, we were at the hill for quite a while. Uh, Rebecca and Amy had a lot of people come up and talk to them. I had a lot of people come up and talk to me. Um, it was it was just very nice to meet everybody. And then also do the festival. We went around looking at the booths. We, didn't, we weren't able to cover a lot on the Saturday because we had commitments to be at the hill at some point of time. Um, yeah, it was just a very nice day. The highlight of our food experience at Rhinebeck. Last time I was there, I know I fangirled over the apple cider donuts, but, but this time there was a Brussels sprouts 
vendor and we completely enjoyed the brussels sprouts like uh, we had the brussels sprouts on both days <laughs> it was it's funny that we're going to a festival and eating brussels sprouts but it was really nice and they had like this garlic aioli sauce with it and that was wonderful um so yeah on saturday i'm trying to think if i bought yarn yes i did buy yarn on saturday so of course i went while we were going around looking at all the boots and everything i went and found the loop fiber boots and for some reason i have not come across loop fibers before rheinberg like i don't know where i was living under a rock or something but they have this yin and yang um yarn line so i ended up with um the yin and yang yarn with this black and orange they had a um, so super simple summer sweater by hohi in a worsted weight so this yarn is in fingering and worsted but i bought the fingering but the sample was in a worsted weight and it was basically striped these two colors striped and i just love you know this is this is this is my color for sure so i just love the sample but i didn't want to buy the worsted weight so i ended up with fingering and i'm thinking i'm going to make a yoke simple yoke sweater and stripe these yarns and they had knitted up swatches of all their colors uh hung up at on the wall and that was just so lovely to feel and it knits up so beautifully so i was super excited with this um loop fiber yarn that i saw and it's just 100% extra fine merino and um the colorways are all that and this is then some so <laughs> it's it's really nice so i'm going to stripe this and make a simple yoke sweater so that was my purchase on the saturday How are you enjoying your time? I'm having a good time. <laughs> it is crowded, but like, like manageable, and there's so much cool stuff. So, yes. so far, so good. Are you going to buy yarn today? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and buy yours today. If I, if I have to. Hi. How are you enjoying your time, Amy? I am having a wonderful time. Apparently, I was walking through that barn, and the lady stopped me. She said, "Amy," and I went, "Yes." And she said, "You look a little overwhelmed as you are walking. Now, I was seeing your eyes getting bigger and bigger and bigger." And you <laughs> She said you look like you need a hug and I went, okay. <laughs> that was wonderful. So many lovely yards. <laughs> Then um, Saturday evening was uh, an event hosted by Brooklyn General Store. Um, we bought tickets to that because we heard about the event on the Knitting Posse podcast, and I know the I know the guys from uh, Needles at the Ready were going to be there. Michael from Peace for Peace was going to be there, so we decided we'd take we'd buy tickets to the event, and we had bought tickets on like a week before or something. So Amy, Rebecca, and I had purchased tickets, and it was at this beautiful farm called Rosehill Farm, which was like 10 minute drive from um, Dutchess County Fairgrounds, where the New York Sheep and Wool is held every year. Um, so there was some, there was an hour between the two events, like after we finished at Rhinebeck and before we had to be at the Woolen Fair um, venue, there was an hour and we found like a cute uh, coffee shop and we uh, were at the coffee shop, um, just, you know, got some coffee and um, like a I think I had an apple crisp or something like that or a pumpkin crisp. Rebecca and I got something to eat and we got coffee and then we were just sitting and knitting and it was nice to have like an hour just, you know, not talking too much, just knitting and um, 
taking a break before the next event. We didn't have time to go back to our um, Airbnb and come back. So we just decided to stay at the coffee shop. And then it was the Woolen and, uh, Woolen Affair event. Um, and that was very, very wonderful. It I think they had sold about 200 or so tickets to this farm. They had tents set up outside. There was an indoor location. There were tables, picnic tables. There were food trucks, very well lit. The tents were also very well lit, so you could sit and knit. There were fire pits, two fire pits uh, and chairs around it. And then it was just very nice to like hang out in a very like relaxed atmosphere, get a drink, get some food, just hang out with people and talk. And there were pop-up events by Labioneme and Mayak Fibers. I did not buy any yarn, but the Woolen Affair event had a really cute t-shirt because this was their logo and brooklyn general store you can see here um since 2002 and they have this really cute logo and so they had t-shirts so i ended up with this t-shirt this is way longer than i needed to be so i'm thinking i might actually be able to cut it a little like this much off and uh, i haven't tried it on it might be a bit big as well anyway i just bought this t-shirt it was the only merch i ended up at from the weekend so yeah so it was a very relaxed and wonderful event we got to talk to a lot of people uh, my uh, one of the uh, one of the connections that i enjoyed making the most was michelle from woolens and nosh was there and i love michelle's yarn like she's such an amazing dyer um she makes the sock sets like the self-striping yarn and everything and i thoroughly enjoyed talking to michelle um caleb from the bearded pearl was there um the bearded pearl moved to europe so they have not recorded any recent podcasts but i love watching their videos because they're completely all their interests kind of match with my interests they knit so quilt they have cats like it was it, it was one of my favorite it is still one of my favorite um podcasts to watch so Caleb was there and I got to say hi to him and then we were already hanging out with the with the people we had met before. So knitting posse, needles at the ready, um Max and Max from Lagar. So and of course I I saw the cabin boy knits uh Jamie and Chris, I think. Um and yeah, it was really really nice to see everyone and to have a chat with them and it was more much more relaxed i do believe the event is gonna get bigger next year so i don't know if i would do it again honestly um i'm trying to reconsider all these events around rhinebeck i might just go and do rhinebeck that might be my thing and then the evening off i would just like to uh, whoever i go with just you know hang out at the airbnb and knit or something like that so uh, but it was a wonderful event. I did enjoy going there and it was much more relaxing than the other events. So Sunday was the final day at Rhinebeck and then we it was our shopping day as well. So we did go around looking for yarn that we wanted to purchase. Though I don't need any more yarn, I did end up, I was fawning over some bat and kill fibers yarn the previous day so i had to go back in there to buy some um it's basically hudson valley fibers it was at the baton kill um booth and it's called moodna heathers and this is a 40 percent new york state romney and 60 percent merino blend color is house finch and i mean can another can a color be more me than this like this is everything that i like and i bought a sweater's quantity of this yarn and i think i want to make a cardigan out of this it would i don't think i have like a pinkish red cardigan in my wardrobe and it this would be really nice i'm thinking about the field day cardigan by ozata i've made that already in a mauve and i think this would be a nice second field day cardigan to have it's very soft it's wonderful yarn so that's what I ended up buying. Uh, I I can't remember what I bought next. I think we then ended up at this beautiful farm um, or beautiful booth called Shenandoah Fibers. 
uh, they are an alpaca f alpaca farm and I ended up with this yarn and I'm actually yarn twins with Amy because Amy bought uh, the same yarn it's 90% uh, alpaca 5% bamboo silk bamboo slash silk so I don't know what the ratio of bamboo to silk is and 5% merino very very beautiful drapey yarn you can see just in the skin right like very beautiful yarn and I like buying alpaca at these knitting festivals because I don't think alpaca is that, that much readily available online and I really like farm alpaca which is softer and everything so I really like this color and this blend they had a few different blends there um, it's kind of a midnight purple-ish color. I hope you can pick up so you can see the difference between black and this. So, really pleased with this. And again, I want to either make a shawl or a vest in this. And if and if the vest grows, it's okay. If, if it grows a little, I can make it like shorter and then let it grow it. I'm okay with that. So I might swatch and then see how much the swatch grows if I hang it up, right? But the swatch is smaller than a vest, so it ends up growing more in a full garment because of the weight. We'll see. We'll figure it out. And they had, with every purchase you make, they, would give, they will give you a small card which talks about the alpaca that gave its, you know, fiber to make the yarn. So I'm going to read you this because this is so brilliant. Pop it. She is... Pop it. I think it's a she. Oak Tree Farms Tomboy Poppet with her beautiful bay black coat is Oak Tree Farms dark nature loving girl. Poppet loves farm e equipment. Anything John Deere green. <laughs> Given the chance, she would get in the four wheel gator with you to deliver hay to the rest of her friends. We would try it, but eventually she would want to drive. <laughs> Um, we are currently looking for an alpaca whisperer to help her. Alpaca, just like Poppet, grew the soft, all-natural fiber. Provenance Mill spun the yarn from the fiber and an artisan hand-knitted your garment. I think this is like a card that you can write what your garment size is and then if you're giving, it has hand wash or like care and handling instructions in the back and it has this provenance mill logo on it so this is a really nice card um so i guess poppet did not give the fiber but an alpaca just like poppet grew the soft fiber it says so anyway it i i really love the when you know they give you details about the animals that um are the source of all this wonderful natural fiber that we work with so um so yeah, so that was Shenandoah, Shenandoah Fiber Mill in Fairfield, Virginia. Um, they also have this card. So it was very, very nice um, vendors. Um, and then the next thing we ended up buying, we went to a few booths that I didn't purchase from, but Amy and Rebecca will probably tell you about those because they they purchased from those booths. But I'm only talking about the ones that we went, that I bought from. So the other one that I was looking forward to to um, purchasing from is this Nash Island woolen yarn. So apparently there are some sheep on this island that nobody tends to. And these um, the people from this company, they go in boats or whatever. I don't know how they get there. And they get to the island and then they shear the sheep and bring back the wool and they process it. And they have the most beautiful colors. I think the booth is called Starcroft. And I think maybe the owner's last name is Starcroft. Yes, it's starcroftfiber.com. But this is called Nash Island Tide. So I bought these beautiful colors from their booth. Um, I really, really liked all the colors. They had like this plethora rainbow colors like beautiful shades everything super saturated which is like my favorite kinds and i walked away with these four colors and i'm so so pleased with these they are four ply 100 percent wild main island wool that's what it's called and um i just think uh color work something would be really nice i have not decided what i want to do color work with 
but i have a lot of four ply beige so i think i will be able to get a nice vest if i want to again i'm thinking vests so this apparently the whole festival i was thinking about vests um so that's what i thought i could do with like a beige main color but i could do something else like you know mitts or i don't wear hats but like a cowl or something i don't have a lot of accessories so i might look into that but um that is what i bought um i think that is everything acquisition wise and that was basically what my saturday sunday was or what our saturday sunday was at rhinebeck i did end up buying uh, some new york whiskey for baljeet and i brought it home <laughs> he was very happy that i thought of him and bought him something he collects scotch bourbon and whiskey so i got him that and yeah so that was everything saturday we were there we again went and had brussels sprouts on sun sorry not saturday sunday we were there until three we again went and had some brussels sprouts got some coffee there was a uh when there was a food truck there i purchased some cookies for my drive back and i basically left um the venue around 3 p.m and got home by 10 or so um the drive back was easy it was fine the weekend had been super busy so i was happy to be driving back amy and rebecca got uh, a ride from kim and jonna basically and amy had to go to a friend's place and uh, rebecca was going back to the um john f kennedy airport in new york city so they both were able to get rides back um so that was good and i just left rhinebeck and came straight home and honest and like after the whole thing i needed like a week to just recover from everything i met so many wonderful people saw so many beautiful knitters and their sweaters and uh, the energy was just spectacular um i am so thankful for having the opportunity to hang out with amy and rebecca throughout the weekend they made the perfect travel companions and uh, we had so much fun together i think and um got to know them so much better and it was really really wonderful um i think the whole experience was totally about the people i met uh the one thing that i wish we did more of was knit <laughs> I feel like for a knitting festival, the amount of time I actually knit was quite less. Um, so that was my one big takeaway from it. So I think if I were to plan it next time, I would consciously dedicate a morning or an afternoon or an evening to sitting and knitting with friends. I mean, I'm not saying I I want to knit in a room by myself, but like get together and just chill and knit and not have an activity to do or somewhere else to go or something like that so but all in all i had a wonderful time and amy and rebecca made it like the best weekend like you know it will i will remember this for really 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 long time <laughs> um i hope while i've been talking i've been adding some footage as i usually do i am never organized enough to um you know i always just like let myself talk at the speed i talk and then just find gaps wherever and put in other footage so i hope i've done that as usual but yeah so that was basically what the weekend looked like everything i ended up with oh i forgot completely um Casey actually gifted me this skein of yarn by Woolberry Fiber Company along with the project bag and it has just been sitting here and I've been looking at it and I didn't even realize that I forgot to show this and this is called pressed flowers very very pretty it's a DK very natural DK so it's 100% non superwash merino um, DK skein it's beautiful i think i might end up making a hat for myself i don't wear hats but i have one hat that i really like and it's a loose-ish hat so it doesn't mess up my hair too much and if it's like a bad hair day or i'm outdoors and it's cold and i need a hat then i'll i'll wear a hat so i might actually end up doing that with this skein of yarn so 
totally derailed what I was saying, but that's how it goes here, right? Like that's what I do. <laughs> So yeah, so that was everything um, we did last weekend. And since then, since I got back, I've I've had to jump back into work. Work has been a bit insane as usual. I think it's always insane. I think that's the level at which work exists for me. So, um, but today being Sunday, I got yesterday to just, you know, relax and not do anything and just knit and um then i decided that okay i have to record today otherwise i think i'm busy next weekend and the weekend after that would be the first chance i'll get to record so that would be too far away from the actual weekend and i might forget details so anyway so that was the recap i hope you enjoyed my ramble i know it, uh, i don't know if you know um that was everything you were expecting it to be because I had been talking about Rhinebeck for so long and I was building up to this. So, but that was how the weekend went. And uh, I am so, so thankful for everybody, all of the viewers who came and said hi to me. Like, it was just so incredibly amazing to know so many people watch and um, they were so nice to come and say hi. And um say that they like my videos like and a lot of people actually said that they really liked my episodes with my mom and i have to tell her that because she will be so happy to know that the two episodes i did with her people thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed and that was very nice to hear as well so my mom got some love as well at the event um the one other thing i forgot to mention is actually amy gave us some earrings i'm actually wearing this ear stud that amy gave but i feel like it's too far away to even show it properly but that is the earring that i got from amy so more gifts got so much stuff during this weekend and i keep forgetting and then i'm remembering and i'm telling you as i remember it <laughs> So yeah, so that was everything, I think. Uh, I don't know if I'll suddenly remember something else and then I will start talking about it again. I think this might be a good spot to end the video. And if I forget something, I will talk about it in my next episode. <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much if you stuck with me until the end. Thank you so much if you come and said hi to me during the event last weekend, during any of the events last weekend. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed meeting every single one of you. And um, I'm so, so, so grateful and thankful for this knitting community. It has definitely... Um, changed my life and uh i have made so many friends and it has completely um it, it you know i i love it i i love this knitting community and um please go and support the woolen folk vendors i know you already know about a lot of the you know issues the vendors had so there's been a lot of talk about it there's like a link to all the vendors and you can go and purchase from them um i was able to purchase for a, from a few of them that i wasn't able to see at woolen folk so i was happy i was able to do that after the fact i just ended up with some sock yarn <laughs> towards the end but yeah uh thank you so much for everything i really appreciate uh and love this uh, knitting community Please leave a, like a comment. I love reading your comments. Thank you so much for all the comments you already leave on all my videos. Um, I really appreciate them. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time, stay safe, take care and happy crafting. Bye.